Our single biggest impediment to growth is human vulnerability, fear of judgment, fear of rejection. To humanize the conversation, it's it's how business was done forever ago. You know, people want to do business with people. All anyone that we're working with wants out of life is to be seen as the unique individual human being that they are, that they matter. I am talking to Ethan Butte from Bomb Bomb, and we are talking about the power of video messages and why you need to be using them now. Let's go. What's up, friend? I'm Ryan Coral from Studio Sherpas, and this is the Grow Your Video Business Podcast. This is the show. If you're a corporate or commercial filmmaker and you want ways to build a sustainable video production business, this is the show for you. This is where we talk about the business of production, the unsexy things like sales and marketing and process and operations and just all of the things. Uh, but we geek out about it. And I promise you, if you listen from start to finish, you will walk away with at least one thing that you can do in your video business that will make an impact, that will drive revenue or save you time, create efficiencies, make you more profitable, and get you that much closer to building the video business of your dreams. Speaking of dreams, if you have not watched my Six Figure Filmmaker Workshop, I wanna invite you to do that. I've taken my 18 years of experience in running my own team, building a company that has done over a million dollars in revenue multiple times, and uh, I share like some of the struggles and the frustrations and the triumphs, uh, the things that I've done well. I've jam-packed uh, all that stuff into this uh, workshop. You can get access to that. There's a lot of actionable things things I kind of take you through in this uh, totally free workshop. You can get access to that by going to studiosherpas.com slash workshop. Uh, so that is my gift to you. I hope you uh, check it out. And uh, if you haven't already, man, do it. Okay. Um, in the meantime, seriously, this is such a great topic. And I'll share two really quick stories. The power of video and video messaging. I sent uh, the biggest proposal that we've ever sent this, I'm sorry, the second biggest proposal that we've ever sent this morning to an agency client. And I sent a loom video and uh, we'll talk about loom and bomb bomb and all that stuff here in the episode. But I sent this video where I just kind of walked them through what, what some of the decisions I made in this proposal. And I sent that over to them a few minutes later, the, uh, agency owner messaged back and said, love this idea of this video walkthrough. I'm totally stealing this idea. And uh, and then I had uh, just a few days ago, this week, two times this week, I've had two individuals. Uh, this woman on Monday, I sent her a video where I was talking about how we were gonna price and estimate this project. And she messaged back and she was like, this is amazing. I just forwarded it to my entire sales team so they'll start doing video messages. So all of the things that Ethan and I talked about in today's episode, I have two examples just from this week of people responding. So who knows how many other people uh, got my video messages and, and haven't responded, but uh, the fact that people are seeing these and are like, this is really, this is your opportunity to be able to stand out in a crowded marketplace. So all of that, let's get into this episode with Ethan. Here we go. What's up, friends? Hey, welcome to another episode. And the third time I'm trying this intro with me today is the amazing Ethan Butte. He is the chief evangelist at Bomb Bomb. He's a Wall Street Journal bestselling author of Human Centered Communication. This book right here, which I know you've heard me talk about, I've had other amazing guests who are from in, in the, from this book, who've been quoted in this book. Uh, he is. Uh, a, an author twice, right? You've got uh, two books. Uh, the other book is Rehumanize Your Business. And he is the, the host of the Chief Evangelist and the Customer Experience Podcast. Ethan, the, the things that you talk about and the way that you think, I'm just so excited and thrilled to have you on the show. Thanks for, thanks for joining us today. I appreciate it so much. First of all, I appreciate the invite. Second, I appreciate the opportunity to spend time with anyone who, um, and it's not about my ideas, it's about the, sh or, or even my writing up of them. And of course, as you already mentioned, that book represents a lot of people's philosophies and strategies and tactics. But really the whole goal there is 
I guess what brought us together into this conversation, which is to find people who see the world a similar way. And if you can be the one that kind of lays down something that people can look to and say, yeah, that represents my, my beliefs and my values. Let's connect around that. I mean, that's essentially what that book is a celebration of people looking to uh, deal with the reality that we're operating digitally, virtually, and online, but to do it in a more personal and human way. And so um, thank you for giving it a go and for propping it up. And um, our conversation is is reflective of the spirit of the whole project. Yeah, love that. So what what was the like what was the impetus? Like like I know you you joined Bomb Bomb. You were one of the first, I think, 10 employees there. Uh, very unique idea to the way that I think we had been communicating for a long time until uh, you know things started to change and people started to see like, wow, uh, maybe, maybe we're not doing this uh, as well as we could be. But for you, like, take me to that moment where you're like, I, I, this needs to be different. The way that, w- the way that we are connecting and communicating with each other, this, this is not the best way. I think there is a better way. What, what was it for you? Yeah, I'll move really quickly and get to that point. Um, so the original founder's vision, I mean, the, our two co-founders were sales and marketing guys. Yeah. And, uh, one of them in particular was selling billboards, outdoor advertising with a company called Lamar, big, oh, yeah. uh, you know, billboard yeah. owner across the United States. And certainly here in Colorado Springs, uh, where we are and, uh, well, most of us are now. And, uh, he knew that when people were buying from him, they weren't just buying ad space for a particular amount of time on a particular rotation on a particular set of roads that have a particular number of cars driving by to create a particular number of impressions that's all true, but they were buying him. Mm-hmm. They were buying his strategy. They were buying the way he made them feel about their own business. He was bringing them more than just advertising opportunities. And I bet almost everyone listening to the show is doing more than just, I'm going to give you this, 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 and this. That's so transactional. And so he knew intuitively that there was a lot more to it, but he grew his list to a point where he couldn't stay in front of people as often as he wanted mm-hmm. to. So he had the idea of what if I could send myself in an email through a video for a contract renewal or to give an update on a board rotation or to wish someone a happy birthday or a congratulations or a follow-up on a meeting or an appointment to reiterate the most important points to make sure that that deal actually went through. Um, And of course, back in 2005, 2006, this wasn't a thing. So, uh, so Darren Dawson and Connor McCluskey decided they they got motivated by one of their mentors to actually go build it. Mm. So I came along with them in, um, 07, 08, started working with them in 09, um, doing project work with them. And for me, the big turning point when I knew that this can and should be a much bigger thing, the point where I had my full aha moment, where I knew that I was committed to this idea, not just to this company and to this team, but to this broader idea of rehumanizing our digital communication which has almost exclusively been faceless forever, but that's not how humans have been successful for millennia, that there was an obvious gap there, was really when we moved beyond being a video email marketing platform. Essentially, the initial product that I was marketing um, and learning about and teaching was essentially a MailChimp or a constant contact designed around video. When it got super fun and super powerful was when we took it into the Gmail inbox, we took it into the Outlook inbox, we created mobile apps, and this was now like a quick, easy, on-the-fly thing. It's no longer I'm going to go construct some email marketing material and have video kind of natively in the experience and all the analytics stay together and all that. It's like, this is for any message that has subtlety or nuance or emotion or gratitude or concern or whatever this kind of rich human component that's so difficult to capture and typed out text, which is why we wind up using all caps sometimes or multiple punctuations or, you know, uh, an emoji or an emoticon, which, you know, I drew on some research and rehumanize your business on how that actually generally creates more confusion Mm. than it resolves. And so, um, that was it for me. Like when I started the, the nature, the quantity and the quality of replies and responses that I was getting to my video messages, I, I knew that this was a thing and that almost everyone working professionally can and should have this in their communication toolkit. Mm. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more as, you know, as a founder of a business, you know, I've got employees and part of what I've learned, you know, I've had, <clears throat> I've had a lot of hard conversations with clients that just weren't happy for, you know, a variety of different reasons. 
And I learned very early that uh, an email response is like the worst way to try to diffuse somebody. Um, getting on the phone, tr trying to even getting in person if possible uh, was different and would get a different response. Like I, I would get a fired up, angry person emailing and, and I would call them immediately and then, and, and, they, and they'd be like, oh, you know, okay, it wasn't, it, apparently it wasn't as big of a deal as they had led to, led me to believe in their email. And I was able to diffuse a lot of clients and, and just help them say like, hey, I hear you, I'm with you, like, let's figure this out. And, you know, trying to type that out doesn't, doesn't do well. Um, so as I'm trying to lead my team and say, hey, like not everything is gonna go perfect. And when things don't, you know, if a client is frustrated or if they're confused, you know, to try to write a three paragraph or five paragraph explanation of what you're trying to say without any feeling, sure, a GIF or an emoji or something like that, maybe it can help, maybe it can confuse. But the minute that people can hear your voice and hear the inflection and under, hear, hear the, the sincerity, the, the empathy, all of those things, like it just changes everything. And so I've tried really hard to, to teach my team, like don't try to diffuse of like you can sense a client is confused or anything, uh, like make a video, get on a call if you can. Uh, but if, if immediately, if you want to shoot a quick video and say like, Hey, like get it, like I hear you. I I'm, I'm, I'm going to do whatever I can to follow up with you. Uh, man, that's been such a better strategy than, you know, like you're saying this, this like faceless, like, uh, I, I, I need, I need to know that they're hearing me and that they understand how, how frustrated that I am. Yep. And a couple other things to add. I will not reiterate anything you said because I agree with all of it completely. And I love that you went to kind of like the bad news slash apology use case. I think it's one that's totally overlooked. Everyone's like, how do I get more attention in the inbox and do my prospecting better? And that's a thing. But your use case is exactly right. So I want to plus up or add a couple things to it. Yeah, one, please. the reason why you want to get someone on the phone or send them a video is that the sincerity matters above all. We've all seen that celebrity or athlete or politician get up in front of the podium at the press conference. And there are two camps here. One is the person who reads the words the lawyer wrote word for word off the page. You know that they don't mean a single one of them. Yeah. The other one is the one who is actually contrite. Maybe they're still reading, you know, some lawyer's words, but they also, you know, freestyle a little bit. You know that they mean it. Right. And that there is that there are, are going to be some amends made. The problem with relying on faceless typed out text to do this job isn't just that we can tell the difference when someone means what they're saying and when they don't. The problem with sending it in typed out text is that the recipient has none of those cues yeah. to work from. Right. They're reading it off an email. So if they're still pissed, they're going to project all of that into your words and they're going to read you as passive aggressive. I actually meant when I said, I'm so sorry, I can only imagine how this might make you feel. Mm -hmm. You might truly mean it, but you're giving away when you type that out and send it, you're giving away all of your control yeah. over how that message is received. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas when you say it in a video, they can read it off your face. Humans can read facial express expression of emotion in both a universal and an innate fashion. Innate just means we do it from birth naturally. Um, there's brain activity that allows us to do this and you can detect it in infants. Um, Likewise, it's universal. We do it equally across societies, across cultures, across time. We all express our emotions the same way through our faces. And so this is just fundamental to connecting with and serving other humans. The last thing I'll add, um, because you're right, you do want to be seen and heard and understood. I want you to know that I mean it. I want you to know that I am taking corrective actions and I'm actually going to take those actions. I need you to believe me. And so I'm going to send myself saying it in a way that is so sincere that there's no mistaking that I mean it and I'm doing it. Um, in addition, the reason the video diffuses all of that is that in your doing so, you're making them feel heard them feel seen, them feel appreciated, them feel valued. When you make other people feel, that's all any of us wants, ultimately. You know, we want for ourselves to be seen, but all anyone that we're working with wants to wants out of life is to be seen as the unique individual human being that, that they are, that they matter. Um, and so when you can look at, hey, 
this wasn't supposed to go this way. I understand how frustrated you must be. I can imagine already two or three downstream consequences. That super sucks. And I know that we're a part of that process. I want to let you know, this is what we're doing. Like that's all they want. And I'll last, last day I didn't intend to share this, <laughs> but, but so back when I was running all of our email marketing, um, I would get replies that were like, you know, screw you is the nasty way to say it. Right. Um, Hey, get me off this list would be the other way to say it. Yeah. And so what I would do, I would go into the two systems that we use to send emails. Uh, I would personally manually unsubscribe mm -hmm. them. Sometimes it was as easy as clicking the unsubscribe button in the email they right. were responding yep, to. Yep. And then I would send them a personal video. Hey, especially the people who are like really kind of angry yeah. in their reply, all caps, foul language, et cetera. Um, they obviously just got up on the wrong side of the bed because it's an email, dude. Yeah. You know, unsubscribe, delete it, mark it for abuse if you feel like it's abusive. Right. But like, anyway, when I would get these replies, I'd send a video back and I'll just perform one. Yeah. Hey, Jeff, it's Ethan. Wanted to let you know I got your reply. So sorry. It's not a benefit to you or me to have me send you video, uh, to send you emails that you don't want to receive. It's actually bad for both of us. Wanted to let you know personally that A, really sorry about that. B, I've gone into both of our systems. I've manually unsubscribed you. You should not be getting any more email from us. If at any point in the future, you decide that it might be a benefit to your business to send videos like this one to the people that you're working with, just reply back and let me know. I'd be happy to resubscribe you. In the meantime, take care. Have a great afternoon. And I, no joke, about a third of the time, people would reply back and be like, actually, you know what? Can you please resubscribe me? And I've got a couple questions. So it's like, you know, it's, it's just, that, and that's it. It was, I see you. I'm a real, this, and this is another key too. I'm a real, now this isn't necessarily for the types of business that your listeners are running because sure. it's a little bit more personal and bespoke, yeah. but like for scaled businesses, like software businesses and other businesses that have 70,000, 100 e-commerce business, 70,000, 100,000, 100 million customers. The idea that another human being reaches out to you through these channels and says, I see you, man. Sorry about that. Or congratulations or thank you. The idea that a human be being reaches out and says, this isn't just a set of machines that are all rigged together, blasting out messages. I'm actually a human being and this is my job to make sure that you're clear or satisfied or moving forward or whatever, like even that act alone warms the whole thing up. Dude, <clears throat> that's amazing. I love, I mean, your response, I would, I, I'm just going to make an assumption here. 20 years ago, uh, if, where, where were you working 20 years ago? What were you doing? I was, I was working at a broadcast television station in either Chicago or in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Oh, Grand Rapids. All right. So we're like neighbors. Yeah. Uh, so let's just say you, you got a phone call from somebody who was, uh, or, or a letter or an email or whatever, some, somebody super fired up. Would your response has the way that you respond or, or understand empathy changed in 20 year over the course of 20 years. And really what I'm trying to get at is like, as you played out that little, you know, here's the video that I sent to this guy who was real fired up. Um, I think there's a lot of people who are like, how do you even like find those kinds of words? Because if somebody sends me an email like that, I'm going to fire right back at them and say like, well, what the heck did you sign up for my list in the first place for you idiot? Because I didn't sign you up, you know, like how, how do I you love, get to that spot? <laughs> love this question because it's a, I don't get to talk about it very often. And I, as a consequence, I don't really even think about it that often, but the first thing that came to mind is is a really unique, powerful, underlying aspect of sending video messages as part of the way that you're communicating. You don't send video all the time. I still send typed out emails and text messages and Slack messages and social DMs, you know, getting intellectual and pecking it into the keyboard and sending it up. I still do that, right? So you don't do it all the time. But when you make this a basic habit, you become more consciously aware of you fronting your message. I think so many people intentionally for a variety of different reasons, hide behind a cloak of digital anonymity. And when you commit to expressing some of your messages as your whole self with your real face and your real voice, as much as you might not like either one of them, um, you know, it makes you comfortable, uncomfortable to play these videos back or whatever. When you are physically embodying this and you have to stand up for your own words um, they start to mean a lot more to you. 
right? Like how many times have we read the word thanks or thank you at the bottom of an email? It, it's to the point of like, it almost doesn't mean anything. I know that it does, but in a lot of ways it it doesn't functionally. But when someone reaches out, even if it's a seven second video, hey man, I saw what you did on LinkedIn the other day. That was so kind. I appreciate it so much. You're amazing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Have an awesome rest of your Thursday, right? Like that's different than typing the same thing out. And so I, what I'm at and what I'm fired up about is this idea of like when I knew my face and my name were more than just the email mm -hmm. signature in that message and in all of these messages and now the way that I'm conducting myself and the attachment that people are having to the company that I represent is a lot more personal. And I am now tied to it as Ethan Butte, not just email signature, title, position, um, bunch of faceless words and you can assign whatever value you want to them. You have a different stake, not just in your communication. You have a different stake in the customer relationship. And the reason that I would take 30 seconds out of my day, instead of just hitting unsubscribe and saying, Hey, sorry, sorry, dude, is a typed out thing. And I would, you know, essentially double the length of time committed to do that thing. I'm going to do it regardless. I think of it, and this is cliche as hell, but I, I think of it as legacy. I feel like if I do something like this a couple times a day, most days of the week for the years that I've been here, that adds up. It says something about me to myself. It says something about me to our prospects and customers and the other people that I'm engaging with. It says something about our company and it says something about the medium. And it says something about how we can actually do business that's different than the way we've been doing it since email was invented whatever it was now, 40 years ago, popularized about 30 years ago. Um, so it, to me, it just all adds up. Um, and you find the words because if you, and here's the trick, last thing, you actually have to care. Mm. You actually have to mean it. This goes back to kind of like the press conference podium thing. If you don't actually mean it, don't, don't record the video because that'll come through just as well. Yeah, that's, uh, that is very true. I, I even as you're, <laughs> as you're talking, and we're talking about email, but I, you know, I immediately was like, oh, text messaging too, right? I don't know how many times I have a particular family member that I'll ask a favor of and I'll get a response that says, sure. Like the, the word is sure. And I, and I don't know if it's sure or if it's sure. <laughs> so, so a quick, Great. you know, sure. that's, yeah. that's, that's why I love like, you know, that we can send a quick voice message. We, you could shoot a quick video, uh, you know, just be, because that, that those inflections and all of those things, uh, they matter. And, um, the more that we can bring that into our, you know, uh, conversations, the more helpful, the more, <laughs> the, the less misunderstood and, uh, uh, I think just the less frustration and uh, annoyance people might experience. <laughs> totally. <laughs> oh man. Um, what in, in the work that you have been able to do, is there, is there a story that stands out from somebody that may have not been using this, using video uh, in this way that started using it and was like, oh my gosh, this changes everything. Uh, yeah, I mean, tons and tons of stories and use cases and success stories. I guess the first thing you triggered for me was, um, you know, early on, I would do all of our videos and I would do all of our webinars. I would do some training videos. I would do like all the stuff. And so sometimes I would go over to Guard of the Gods. I'm in Colorado Springs. Guard of the Gods is beautiful. A lot of, um, you know, revealed sandstone uh, with Pikes Peak as the backdrop. It's just a gorgeous setting. And so I'd go over there and, do, you know, plan to do like a solid four or five minute video that I kind of edit up and drop some product shots over and kind of, you know, I just felt like they'd be better to watch if they were in a nice place. But then I would always like, you know, write down a little list of other people I wanted to send personal videos to because I figured if I'm in this beautiful place, yeah. I set it up, I got my little mic clipped on, which I don't now, almost all of the videos yeah. I'm doing, I'm just sitting at my desk as I am right now on this, on this conversation. Um, but I would, uh, I remember sending videos to a couple of our most prolific users early days. So, you know, as hopefully someone can stitch together in their head already, video email and video messaging is for almost everyone. Almost anyone who is needs a yes from someone else a couple of times a day, no matter what that yes is, um, 
and they need to rely on digital channels to do a lot of that communication because no one's picking up the phone. We don't have time to schedule a phone call or I can't wait till both of our schedules are available. I need to communicate this. Um, could benefit from this, but you can't go to market that way. So um, I would look into our customer base, like through the admin dashboard, see who is recording videos. I would subtract the day they signed up from that, that day's date. And I would look at their videos per day rate. Mm. And anytime someone was out of the gate, super hot, dude, this guy's been with us for like two and a half months and he's been averaging like 4.6 videos a day. Like I want to, so I'd send these people videos. And I would send them videos and it'd be like, you know, I'd congratulate them on their mile saying, Hey, you've already sent 200 videos and you just signed up with us or something like that. Hey, could you send me a video back and let me know, how did you find us? How are you using us? Like, what are those 200 videos? Like, what are you actually doing? Is this additive to your process or do, are we replacing something that you used to do before? Like anything you have to share, I would love to hear it. So I would do this all of the time. And I remember the replies I got back from two of our customers, one guy named Michael, one guy named Andy. Both of them are actually mentioned in Rehumanize Your Business. I think there are probably 30 or 35 customers mentioned in that book. And both of them replied in about the same way. And it was, you know, I've been using this a lot and I kind of recognize the power of it, but my aha moment that made me really step on the gas is when you sent me a video and you greeted me by name and you were answering my question. And what a lot of people will do, and I've had this, and I know our customers get it all the time too, they'll get replies back. They're like, oh my gosh, that was it. So let's just pretend a prospect or a customer reaches out with a question. You're like, well, I could take the time to type this up as four paragraphs, um, or I could just record a video and explain it in layperson's terms for 92 seconds. When you do that, that is a gift of your undivided time and attention. You could have spent literally two or three times longer writing the email, and typically you would. Um, but they, but they don't assign any like time value to that. Right. So like, thanks for answering my question. When you send a video back, it's like, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. And so kind of the, the, the regular person would get a reply from me where I'm answering their question, greeting them by name. It's a truly bespoke video that's just for them. And they would reply back and say, oh my gosh, that was so helpful. That was amazing. I've never gotten a reply like that. Thank you so much. Um, I, I'm going to take the next step. What both of these guys and some other people have replied back they made the extra step to not just say that was amazing and I enjoyed that experience. It's that was amazing. I enjoyed the experience and I know that I'll be way more successful if I can make my prospects and my customers and my referral partners feel like you just made me feel. So I'm going to step on the gas and I'm going to do this. I I'm committed. I'm going to do this all the time. I'm going to do this forever. This is how I do business now. So it's like that's kind of two versions of an aha moment. Um, the one thing I've said a lot, like I, one of the things I do is I, um, when we hire a certain number of employees, they'll, they'll go as a little cohort of, of new team members, we'll put them on tour for like two thirds of a day meeting with leaders of different teams to kind of see how the business all works together and get faces to go with all the Slack channels and messages and just bring it to life a little bit. It's like a little onboarding tour. Yeah. And I do the marketing portion of it. And one of the things that I often share is that um, our single biggest impediment to growth is human vulnerability, fear of judgment, fear of rejection, fear of getting on camera, fear of putting yourself out there, fear of letting go for a minute in a recorded format and just being yourself in service of one or more other people. Like that's our single biggest impediment yeah. to growth. Our biggest key to long-term success is more people sending more videos in a basically human-centered way. And that's to say, if more people have this experience that our regular users are creating for other people, they get turned out and they get it. People just get it. This is different. This is better. I feel seen. I feel heard. I understood. I got an answer to my question or I feel safe or secure or confident to take the next step, whatever that is in this, you know, buying process, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, I think more people doing it normalizes the behavior and will turn other people on to this makes diff business easier, warmer, better, faster. I get to win as myself again. A lot of people, and I promise I'll stop talking. In a, minute. Um, <laughs> a lot of people that have been in, so we do a ton of business, for example, in mortgage, financial advisory, insurance, these businesses that are essentially commodity businesses. And the differentiator is the service provider. It is 
the insurance person. I'm going to work with him instead of her because I like the way this dude makes me feel. They both have a bunch of great online reviews, but I talked with both of them and this dude gets me or something like that. The person is fundamental to the service. And a lot of these customers of ours have been in their business for 20, 30, 40 years. They've been through this transformation that we've kind of background been talking about here in this conversation, which is like, we used to do it face to face. Now no one picks up the phone anymore. I can't even talk to anybody. And so they're saying things like, this makes what I do fun again. It's a pale version of being able to see everybody all of the time, but I can create these little in-person moments. It's fun for me. It's well-received by other people. And it makes the world smaller and warmer and better again as it's increasingly digital and increasingly cold. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's brilliant. And I would say for me too, I remember, I, I think I remember getting, uh, an email. It was actually a bomb bomb email for the first time. And, uh, I think somebody had writ- written on a piece of paper, my name. And I was like, uh, it, you know, it was in the email and I was like, oh, wow. It's like, okay. So I clicked on it and I watched and I was like, oh, that's really cool. And then, you know, when somebody, you know, actually, like you said, like when they said my name, I was like, oh, okay. Like this is, this is neat. Like this is for me. And it's like, you do the same thing in an email. You write the person's name and then you get your message across. But, but it really is that, uh, in, in so many of our, our video businesses, we're, we're, we're not like you know, we don't have a thousand clients a year. We might have 20, we might have 50. And to to go that extra step for anybody that's reaching out for a, a quote or an estimate on a job and they just send an email form submission to, to take that step and just to introduce yourself really quick and just say, hey, I got it. And this sounds great. I looked at your website, you know, just to, to say like to to humanize the conversation. Uh, it's, it's how business was done forever ago and uh, you know, people want to do business with people. They don't want to do business with this, you know, really cool brand and, oh, they got, you know, look at their work and it's a website. It's like, but it's like people, like you are the brand and the, the sooner we can understand and realize that, uh, I think the bigger impact that we'll have, the more fulfilled we'll feel. And, uh, and that just, I mean, especially right now, because it's still probably such a small percentage of people that are using video in this way that you can still stand apart from, you know, the rest of the, your competition or, or the community. Yeah. Despite my best efforts for a yes. dozen years now, it's still true. <laughs> it's so funny. You're doing You're great, exactly man. right. And I just want to like, I want to give folks, cause you just opened the door to it. And I know that we're, we're kind of tight on yeah, time yeah. here, but you mentioned a couple of great use cases there. And so I just want to like make them plain as day for people to see, like, if you want to do this and it's not just to feel good, by the way, a thank you Thursday habit where you send five thank you videos every Thursday morning before you get into your day, great habit. But let's just set that aside for a minute. By the way, that will produce business for you. Um, One of my very favorite videos is kind of like the post discovery call video, right? Whether you're, you know, Someone fills out a form on your website, you send a reply, they agree to jump on a call with you or meet in person if you can, or you jump on a phone call or a video call or whatever. And there's a little bit of discovery about what they're looking for. They meet you, you meet them. You get to understand what their real motivations are, what their concerns are. You've already done some of your own. You mentioned like, you know, scanning the website, reading whatever they submitted through their inquiry, et cetera. Like you've done a little back background with them, but that time together, um, A, you can use video to make sure that your show rates, if you have any issue, like with people actually showing up for the appointments they're scheduling. I don't know how common that is in in this business. Uh, It is in a lot of other businesses. And so it can increase show rates, but really the money video is the post-discovery follow-up where you are going to maybe use AI to generate a bullet point highlight list based on the transcript of the call. But what this transcript will never do that is your job is what wasn't said. How was something said? Um, what are their real concerns and motivations? What is their urgency? Are they scared to death? Are they super excited? Like all of these things that, you know, intuitively right off the bat. So I always like whether you're going to manually type up the key bullet points uh, on the call and remind them of the next step, include a video where you're meeting them where they are emotionally, you're using their own language back to them. And you're making sure that not only did you see them and hear them and understand them, but you have a plan for their future where they will be so happy that they took the next step six months, 12 months, 18 months from now, because you are the people that are going to make 
make their uh, problem go away or make their dreams come true. That's a money video. The other one that you already mentioned is presenting the actual contract or proposal, especially if there's some legal language in it that tends to confuse people. If you wind up getting any red lines or pushback, or you tend to have conversations about, you know, one or two of the key passages, even if it's basically boilerplate over and over again, send a video with that and say, Hey, or even screen record, by the way, you could screen record and walk and talk someone to attached is the document you're looking at on, at on your screen right now. So don't worry about the fact that you can barely read it on my screen as the screen recorded. I just want to highlight these two key things in our conversations. You mentioned this, that, and the other thing. So even though it's atypical for us, I wanted to highlight section a, where we're specifically accommodating your needs and interests. And, uh, and we were actually able to deliver it and, and price it akin to the way we were talking about it. So pay attention to section a, and then down below, a lot of people tend to ask about this passage. It's the sign off on the blah, 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 blah. This is why it's there. This is what it means. Um, and if you have any questions about it, let me know. If you have any questions about the proposal, let me know. But again, emotion that brought them to you, picture of a better future together. I see you, I hear you, I understand you. Like those are two videos that you can make a lot of money on. Mm, that's so good. I, I'll also say we do that. We When we send a proposal, we'll kind of walk through, we, we do this uh, blueprint. So we do a workshop with our clients if they're going to do a brand film or something like that. And it's like, you know, they're going to spend $20,000 or more on this piece. And, you know, it's hard to coordinate, okay, two weeks after you're going to get the blueprint. It's hard to like, almost impossible to schedule an in-person meeting. And it's even hard to uh, schedule a, a, a phone call or a Zoom call just to recap or to, to share this thing. So for us to create a quick video that that walks them through, okay, here's here's the things in the blueprint. Um, but then even we, we've had a, a chat recently because we worked with a, a branding guy who works at this, this firm and did it, we did this really cool project with them, but we just sent the video and we sent the, like the video that we shot and edited. And it's amazing. His response uh, to me, he reached out separately and he said, man, I would have loved to, because he's used to the presentation and the setup and, you know, the creative director saying like, okay, so what you're about to see and what you're about to, you know, we're going to, you know, reveal it. And he's like, I, that's what I'm missing. And so we chatted with the team and I'm like, what we should do is, you know, say the video is three minutes long. Let's shoot a one or two minute video that just preps them and says, hey, what you're about to see, you know, look for this, this and this. And things like when we would do a first draft, we we typically we're not checking for spelling like we're, it's just like we're, we're just trying to throw things together to give it give an idea. So to say that. Let, let you know, hey, just so you know, we haven't double checked spelling. We haven't, you know, the, the this thing, it's like there's no B-roll. You're going to see words that say, you know, images of whatever going, that's where we're going to put different things. So to explain all that can really set their minds and hearts at ease as they watch it. So that's something that we're going to do more of. Uh, but, but it's really like we can type that out or we can create a video. And I, I would just say that it's way more well received uh, by our clients when we're able to to make that video, uh, Ethan. This has been so good, man. Like I, I'm, I applaud you for for writing this, uh, the work that you guys are doing. I mean, obviously you're running a business, but you you really do have a heart for uh, people really being able to connect and, and understand and feel differently. So I, I just I love that about what you're doing and the work that you guys are doing at Bomb Bomb. Uh, can you give like a 30 second commercial what bomb bomb actually is and if somebody is interested uh where they might go and then how they could connect with you uh beyond the show yeah absolutely and again thank you so much i've enjoyed this conversation i had three more things i wanted to add yes. but i already knew we were at time anyway um so bomb bomb just makes it easy to record and send and track the results of video messages a lot of the examples i was talking about were like one-to-one -one, truly bespoke but you can actually record a video once and use it over and over and over again um, as people move from one stage to another, these kinds of things, or you can send one video to 50 people or 5,000 people or 50,000 people or whatever. So bomb bomb is a platform that works. You can record and send these videos or screen record from Chrome or edge from Gmail or outlook from iPhone or Android. We have like a lightweight 
quick sender inside our web app that you can log into. We also have like a really nice email constructor drag and drop email maker thing. We have dozens of CRM and platform integrations, biggest ones being things like Salesforce, Zendesk, Outreach, and some other ones. Um, so it really is a matched video recording and screen recording experience with a matched tracking feed, kind of wherever you're working throughout your day as you move from your CRM to your inbox, to your phone, whatever. Our goal is to get you face-to-face -face as often as you want to uh, with the people who matter most to your success. Um, again, my name is Ethan Butte. Last name is B-E-U-T-E. -E, so you can hit me up on LinkedIn. I'm there often. I'm on, I'm on all the social networks as Ethan Butte, um, including Twitter, Instagram, et cetera. Uh, bomb bomb is just bomb bomb, B O M B B O M B. So it's bomb bomb.com. Um, and if anyone had, like, I, I was about to drop a few more use case ideas. You've already observed that I, I care a lot about this. I'd be happy to hear from anyone that listened to this point in the conversation, Ethan, E T H A N at bomb bomb.com. Um, just email me directly or again, DM me on a social network. LinkedIn is best. Um, Thoughts, questions, feedback, additional resources. I've got time for whoever reaches out at the end of this conversation. Love it. Uh, can we can we squeeze in those those two other use cases? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So um, the 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 thing I wanted to add on to the the use case you described, and that that um, you know whether it's the post initial call or whether it's kind of the presenting the contract or proposal. One of the reasons that that matters so much is that not everyone was on the call. Mm -hmm. There are people influencing or even 100%. making the decision that weren't there. So good. Um, this is also true, by the way, of your in-between. I loved your call to the in-between. I guess that's the additional use case is like, well, we've got about two to three weeks between here and there. I'm not going to ask them if they're free on Thursday at two or Friday at noon and expect them to give me more of their time. I'm just going to record this video and give them an update to confirm that everything's on track or to let them know that the timeline's shifted. All of three of those messages can be forwarded easily to other people. And the advantage is you don't need to rely on your main contact to be your proxy inside that company or inside that account. They're just going to forward you because it's the easiest thing to do. But you get to carry the enthusiasm, the sincerity, the gratitude, the message. And you're actually doing them a favor that way. So it's you creating presence and familiarity uh, psychological proximity within that account with people who've never met you. And I know it's a weird dynamic, but people will greet you differently when they feel like they've met you through video. Sometimes it's like, I call it internet famous in your own sphere of influence. Sometimes they greet you like you're a minor celebrity. Um, that's maybe in the case that you're all that you've also sent other communication. In most cases, though, it's just like a little bit warmer in a way that's kind of weird for you because you've never met them, but they feel like they've met you, so they're greeting you differently. It's super powerful. The other use case, by the way, is after a project is complete, hey, it's a recap of where you where you all were. Let's just say it was a four month engagement. Um, let's say it was a three month engagement. And it took a month to set up. Hey, four months ago. You remember when you reached out and blah, 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 and we talked about these things and now here it is brought to life. You've already told me that it's already done this, that, and the other thing for you. What an absolute joy it is. Um, just appreciate so much your faith and confidence in us. Thank you for letting us do this with you. If I can be of any further help, you know exactly how to reach me. If you have another opportunity like this, you know who to reach out to. If other people are giving you feedback and they want to know how you got this done, please give them my name. I will not pressure them. I will reflect favorably on you. I would love to talk with anyone else who needs work like this done. Appreciate you so much. Take care. Have an awesome day. Now, you can do that however you want. If you're going to solicit an online review, if you're going to ask for a customer testimonial, or if you're just going to say thank you and hope because that's your style and you're just going to hope and expect that the referral comes back uh, or the follow-up comes back or the review comes as a consequence, uh, that's just another thing. But, you know, that post-sale experience of kind of buttoning it up, reaffirming that you did what you said you were going to do giving them back any of the positive feedback that they've already given you on the work itself, or more importantly, on the results of the work, um, whether that's from their own team members or whether that's from prospects or customers, whatever the purpose of the piece was, um, reaffirming that you did your job and that they're getting what they wanted out of it and then making yourself available for another conversation. Like that's what this is about because to your point, you're not doing project work for 5,800 people. 
You're doing it for 58 people. You have time to do this. And those people are your best source of new businesses. Everybody knows. Yeah. hundred percent. Ethan. Oh man. I'm so glad that, uh, that we, we covered that so good, uh, man. I appreciate you. Thank you so much again for, uh, for being with us today. It's uh, really, really a gold mine of, of info. So thank you. Thank you. A joy for me. Thank you. I love the questions. All right, my friend, you made it to the end. If you would like access to any of the links or the things that we talk about, we put all that stuff into the show notes and you can access the show notes at studiosherpas.com slash 339. If you are watching this on YouTube or Facebook, if you've got like some takeaway in aha moment, something that just really grabbed you, if you're doing, vi are you doing video messaging? And if you're not, why are you not doing this? Here's the deal, like you don't need to have, you know, lighting and all. it's it's a, it's about making the connection, right? So curious to know where you're at, if you're doing this, uh, if hopefully this episode inspired you to start doing this. And um, yeah, we'd love to hear from you. Feel free, you can shoot me an email to ryan at studiosherpas.com. We'd love to hear from you. If you have ideas for topics for the show or guests that you would like to hear on this show, let me know, okay, bro? <laughs> See what I did there? Lots of rhyming. Yeah, that's good. Uh, okay, I think that's all I have for now. I'm so thankful for you. I do wish you the biggest, bestest success in your video business. And who knows, maybe one day we'll meet face to face. If we haven't already, I will give you an opportunity. October 1st through the 4th, that is a time where there's going to be a bunch of corporate and commercial filmmakers hanging out at our studio near Detroit, Michigan. So you can mark that on your calendars, pencil it in. Registration is going to open pretty soon and you, you're going to want to be ready because we're only allowing 40 people to sign up for the Onward Summit. All that information you can read about more at studiosherpas.com slash onward. Now, onward and upward, my friend. I will see you next. I, I hope I will see you next week. Okay. Bye for now.